Hey y'all, hey, we are back for another review of All the Queen's Men. Let's just jump right into it. We are on Season 2, Episode 17, entitled Deal or No Deal. So, Tommy brings Matt up some breakfast and there's a knock at the door. And it's Doc. He tells her that she left. he left the wire and the jacket at home and he's sure that he wasn't followed. And so she asked him, she's asked him, like, hey, what do you think about Fuego? And he says, you know, he cool, you know, we know each other in passing, we ain't besties or nothing, but he all right. And she asked him, do you trust him? And he was like, madam, come on, you, you know I don't trust nobody, really. And, you know, she just had to create some insurance on him last night. So basically make him dirty, force his allegiance to to her pretty much and now he has no choice um have you ever been to his house maybe once or twice okay make him a reason to go by there this morning so he calls fuego and fuego's just sitting there just drinking and he is in shock um he's called repeatedly finally gets an answer like i said and fuego is sitting there in shock drinking or whatever um then he tells doc that he needs him like i need you to come over right now and um He's like, okay, you know, he tried to make up some docs, excuses. He needs him to look at some computer or something. He's like, okay, fine, whatever, just get here right now. And that is like one of the first few times that I did not like Madam because she, this this kind of gave a glimpse into how she's gleaned so much loyalty from everybody around her. And it comes, you know, by way of, hey, I'll do you a favor, but you owe me a bigger one in return. And um, I'm going to force you into a situation where I have to bail you out and you have no choice but to be loyal to me, which kind of seemed maybe her way of operation, which is why so many people are afraid of her and have blind loyalty to her. Um, this is just my assumption. So I really didn't appreciate that because I felt like Fuego was truly one of the people there that were t only there to, you know, pay his way through college. You know, that's the... That's the stripper, dancer, whatever, number one goal for some people. Like, to get your money, get in and get out. And she's forced him now into this this re lower relationship with her. Because um, she's put him in a situation that is so far-fetched that nobody would believe what the actual truth is. Um, so, she told Doc, you know, make sure he doesn't call the cops. Call me, and I got it from there. All right. Runaway bride lady makes breakfast for Blue. And, um... She's like, listen, you know you got to get out of this apart apartment at some point. Like, you can't just sit up in here and wait around for me all day. And then she asks Blue, they're sitting there talking, you know, shoot the shit. And she asks Blue, who is Cat? And it gave immediate cop or, you know, asking questions you're going to business asking. And she says she saw a picture, you know, somewhere in the apartment. And that pretty much changes Blue's whole mood. Like, she literally flips out and you know tears up the breakfast and throws crap and she's like who who are you and she pulls out the scanner that she um the facial recognition type scanner i guess that she bought from madam and um scans her face to see who she is and her name is jenna she's a model she's a dancer so it doesn't come back as fbi no type of cop or anything else and she realizes that she was wrong about her and she's made this big mistake in overreacting um to who cat was or the question of who cat was um also i will say if she's deep undercover uh, if she's fbi you know they do have ways of erasing you know your real identity and putting out there what they you know what and who they really want you to be so i've heard i don't want no smoke mr fbi cia people that's just what somebody that's just what i heard i don't know i don't know, I don't know nothing about it um and so she begs her blue tells i mean she tells blue like Jenna tells me, look, hey, I, I, I just got out of a physically abusive relationship. I'm not doing that again with you. And, you know, Blue reminds her, like, listen, that's a soft spot. You know, it ended very badly. Um, I didn't mean to flip out like that. Uh, just, just, just don't leave. And that's pretty much as soft as I have seen Blue in this entire franchise. So, Miss Jenna may, you know, she might, she might be putting that thing on her because, um, yeah, it's just, it was just the softest I've ever seen Blue, you know, begging her to not stay and, you know, how she made a mistake and apologizing. So that's what that was. Doc shows up and sees the dead lady in the bed and it's Sandra, his ex. Now, if I'm not mistaken, Sandra is a more light complected, healthier woman. I don't know who the skinny dark skin lady was in his bed and why y'all playing in my face, but... I guess we're just going to pretend it's Sandra. What I really thought, because when they pan to her face, maybe last episode or whatever whatever point, maybe they just put somebody there and he thought it was Sandra because that's who would typically be in his bed when he's asleep. I don't know. I don't know if he ever, you know, got close enough to her face to, to determine if it is Sandra. 
Not sure either way somebody is, is dead at this point. Um. Anyway, he tells them what actually happened, and Doc, Doc he tells Doc what happened, and Doc tells him that he was a victim of what they call a smash and kill, where people rob rob them and makes it impossible um, to portray a clear story to the cops. But Fuego wants to call the cops and, and Doc is, however, able to calm, calm him down and, you know, tells him, I know somebody who can fix this for us. Let me call Madam. And if it were me, and if I were Fuego, and I played, you know, all the, the messages back from the detective in my mind and things that didn't add up, I, that would tell me, okay, what this lady was telling me was true, and I just I just messed up, and now I'm stuck in the situation. But again, he's just as gullible and just as lost as he can be, um, thinking like, oh, okay, you know, Madam can help me. We'll go along with that. He's just, like I said, poor baby's just, he's just innocent in the situation, which makes it hard, you know, that Madam did him like that. I don't, I don't appreciate it, but maybe she's not going to make him, you know, as invested just maybe just to buy his silence that's that's my hope and he doesn't have to pay his way out of there or earn his keep like um midnight baby face and doc because we you know doc doc got bodies on his hands so we don't want to up to end up in that situation because i don't think he has the mental capacity to continuously do this sort of thing all right casanova is still creeping around the corner no, creeping around the park with the investigator, but he's he's moving a bit slower this time because he's still kind of groggy. He's still feeling some kind of way from the attack from the you know from the setup that they did last episode. Um, he tells us that he wasn't able to get his recorder back, and she's looking like, you know, it might be time to abort this mission. So this is the second or third person that's told you, or second or third time you've heard, you know, abort, get out, and he's just he's just in, insisting on you know finishing this out. He claims he's gonna get it back. Um, and she, him suffering the effects of being drugged last night, she considers hungover and tells him, like, hey, you better not be in there drinking or doing anything crazy because that could blow the whole investigation. And just don't blow this for me. I'm, I'll pull you out if you're not doing what you're supposed to do. And he was like, listen, if you pull me out, that'll confirm to them that I was, in fact, a cop. And you know how hard it was to get, you know, somebody in there, in their circle like that. So don't pull me out. Let me, let me finish this. And she was like, okay, cool. You got a month to handle this. Um, or I'm pulling your ass out. And he's like, I can do it. But I need five thousand dollars. I told y'all last episode he was gonna go to her and he was gonna ask for the five thousand dollars, which is suspicious enough because had you had five thousand dollars, you would probably have no business at um down to the Eaton, uh giving a portion of your money to madam. But whatever, we're just gonna go with it. He doesn't tell her why, you know, he just tells her like he didn't make enough money last night, so he needs to buy his way back in with the five thousand dollars that uh Madam said he need to pay. All right. Madam gets to Fuego's place and like I said, they play the what happened game. Oh my God, what happened? Um this what what? You know, how you gonna tell the how you gonna tell the cops, you know, who the people was if you can't see their faces and he thinks it was two white guys and you know, whatever. For me, I think it, I feel like it was Tommy and Blue, but we'll go with it. Um, and Madam tells him, like, listen, this never happened. Once we, once I get done taking care of it, it never happened. And again, oblivious ass where goes like, yeah, you, like she's sitting here dead. Look at me. This shit never happened. It never happened. Let it go. <laughs> it never happened. Just leave it alone. And so he's, so Madam sends him away with Doc and tells, um. Blue to, you know, get to get the cleaning crew to come through. She says a little prayer for Sandra. Say a little Hail Mary. And she keeps it pushing. Like, girl, I hate it for you, but you had to you had to die. So Sandra, you were just a casualty in the in the pond that in the pond, on the chess piece. Um in the game that is madam, unfortunately. All right. Tandy Lavender slash Lotus. Her name is Lotus, but I call her Lavender. Tandy, Lavender, and the judge, they're talking. And Lavender Lotus tells them that the plan did not go well last time. You know, she's crafty. She's real slick. And it's okay. I just need to redirect. Um, and the judge has a plan. She says, well, Eden's being brought up for the ordinance and Tandy's husband is on the board. So what they can do, basically, they want to force her out of that building. And maybe, you know, she'll have to move and that'll um, settle the issues that they have with her. Or maybe she won't be able to find another location and she'll just be out of a building so she can't run business if she's not in that building. Um, so they want to take her from, they want to try to take her down from the approach of the city 
you know, voting her out, uh, voting her out of the community, I guess. All right. So they're going to stage a drive by. They want Madam out of the community so bad that they are going to stage a drive by shooting so that there's a lot of crime and a lot of attention that is brought to that area to hopefully get the board to vote them, vote them out. They want to expedite the process by way of setting up a drive by shoot. Like that's how much they hate Madam. And makes sense. Everybody kind of sort of have a, has a vested interest. Tandy, by way of her, you know, confiscating your sex slave away from you and stealing your little puppy dog, which, you know, is not an equal, is not a one-for-one one, uh, ratio. We, we're not comparing apples to oranges when it comes to that. Um, Lavender Lotus, you mad because you feel like, I feel like you think your husband likes her a little bit more than he likes you, which he don't really like you at all. This is a business arrangement, so again, you don't have that much of a vested interest. Miss Judge Lady, all right, cool, because she keep punking you. She keep punking you. Like, she done drowned you. She done threatened your daughter. She done bust your front door down. She done did a whole lot of shit. But that's because you didn't do what you were asked to do. So, is it really your fault? Is it her fault? Or is it your fault because you didn't, you didn't do what you were asked to do? You you bucking the systems as if you don't know who Madam is already. So, that, that could be, may as well just be your fault. All right. Anyway. Um, they're going to stage a drive-by so they can speed up the ordinance to get them out. All right. Madam shows up to the axe-throwing date that the concierge told her to come to, and she's not impressed. And he goes on to confirm that, yes, my wife is the one that had you kidnapped, but she's not to be touched. If you do, you'll be starting a war. And we know, Madam. I live for wars. I live I live for things like this. And he's asking for his own good and for, for her own good, so he won't be forced to make a choice. Again, the threat means nothing to Madam because make a choice. Who gives a damn? Like, what do, you, do what you have to do, as will I. Um, he makes her an offer of some money to the tune of $23 billion? Million. $23 million to give Lotus slash Lavender a pass. If I give you these $23 million that I have over here set aside, will you leave her, just will you leave it alone? He's close to landing one of the biggest deals of his lifetime, and it is for one of his legitimate businesses. And this deal is going to, you know, garner him $1.1 billion, and he doesn't want anything to get in the way of that by way of these two women being at war with each other. And, you know, forever the businesswoman, Madam, tells him, like, listen, I ain't no damn fool. You just mentioned a potential billion, and you want to offer me $23 million. That's chump change, chump change compared to what you're about to come into, so no deal. No, no deal. He and he also reminds her, like, hey, I looked up your net worth, you're only worth about four million, which get off Wikipedia, because y'all know them people be lying up on those people's net worth. You you ask them and I'd be at a million, which is a lie. I got a damn money. Anyway, um, she's not with it. She's like and he's like he reminds her, like, hey, your net worth is only four million when I looked you up, and that's a diminished because aren't you down a million? Which by way of the rednecks um taking that money from her and um Amp or whatever that situation was about. And she, yeah, she's down to three million, but she's still not going to take your measly 23 just because you threw her a bone just so you can leave Lotus alone, which Lotus started to fight. Now, nah. Madam might lose the war, but Lotus started to fight. Anyway, she ain't with it and she's storming off because she don't want to hear it. All right. Back at Eden, um, Fuego is down in the dumps. He, um, he, he's talking to Doc and he just can't, you know, get over the fact that this is happening. And Doc confides him and tells him, like, listen, I know what it's like to kill somebody. And I, I know what it's like to have to push that down and get back to work. Like, it didn't happen, which is the position that we're in. This is this is what we got to do. Um, and Fuego's like, oh, you, you kill somebody? Give me names. And it was given very much oppy because why do you want to know who? It doesn't really matter because you have your own situation. It doesn't really matter, but he was insisting on names and Doc. Um... You know, pretty much tells him, don't worry about it. Um, he doesn't really know how to move on from the situation. And, you know, they, they get away from the topic and all the other dudes are in there and they're beefing um, about whatever it is that they all have a problem with at the current moment. Blue puts Big D in the main in the main dressing room with the with the star in the four. Like, he, he, five, whatever. He's in there with Amp and Doc. He's in there with the other dudes. He sends him straight in there. And he's trying to spit game at Dime, but doesn't realize that she once belonged to Amp. And so now Amp has a problem with him. You know, he has an attitude, even though you don't want anything to do with Dime. 
you're upset that Big D is potentially about to push up on her, which, you know, he might end up succeeding eventually because he got that, he got a lot going on. Um, anyway, whatever. Casanova is back with the 5K and he wants to make a deal. He talked to Tommy and he said, hey, I got your 5K. I got her 5K. Can I give it to her directly? Um, also, if I give her the 5K, can I get my, let's just call it an iPad. Basically, I don't know. Can I get not an iPad? What you got them doggone things? MP3 player, basically. Basically, is what he's saying because it's just a little device with music on it. They call it recorder. I don't call it MP3 player. Um, <laughs> he wants it back, and he he that want to run. He doesn't want to run the transaction through Tommy. He wants to speak directly with Madam. And Madam, I mean, uh, Tommy tells him, "You give me her money, and I let her, and I let her decide if you back in." If not, you can go about your business because give me the money or we ain't got nothing to talk about. So he has to concede because obviously Tommy is not flexing. He's not letting his guard down when it comes to Madam. So you might as well give him the money and go about your business. You might as well, you know, chalk the simply three or play as a loss also. But you're just not going to let it go. Concierge is home and Lotus is watching camera footage outside of the club. And it is seconds before this drive-by begins. So the drive-by starts and you see innocent people getting gunned down left and right. I mean, they are spraying these people. Um, Madam is running trying to get outside because one thing about it, she ain't scared of nothing. Um, and of course, Tommy is willing to lay his life down on the absolute line for Madam. So he jumps on her and he's not letting her run outside. People are hit everywhere. And she knows it's a setup. And once she's able to get outside, she realizes she knows it's a setup. And she vows to basically get hers back in blood, figure out who put the hit out, and um, exact her revenge. So, um, you know, thing, things are starting to pick up. Well, we're on episode 17. I guess they should be picked up as far as they're going to go by now. But anyway, we're on episode, season, season 2, episode 17. Um, we'll see what happens. Um, who put the hit out on them, which we know this episode has come out back to back. So I already know, but I'll get to it in the next video. Anyway. Season 2, episode 17. Let me know what you think about the episode. Like, comment, share, subscribe, or whatever it is that you feel like doing. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.